Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Start. Uh, the, the, the idea is that uh, I will try to present you a conceptual framework to make uh, models of biological systems and to try to predict their behavior based on uh, computer science technology rather than on classical mathematical modeling. So the, the outline of the talk will be I will present first some slides to tell you what COSBY is and then I will introduce this conceptual framework which is based around the language uh, called Blanks. I will briefly introduce the language and the computational support for the language, uh, simulation, modeling, uh, and visualization uh, related to the systems we are studying. And then since the language is quite uh, technical indeed, in order to allow biologists to use the framework, we built on top of it uh, a, an interface that we call Blanks for Bio that I, from biologists, must of the technical details. We will integrate it into environment, a, a tool for inferring knowledge, uh, because the language will be quantitative in nature, so we need to transform web lab data into parameters that are usable from our tools. And then we integrate all this stuff into a, an environment that we call Cosby Lab. So uh, first of all, the Cosby Center is a multidisciplinary environment uh, just because to interact with biology from a computer science side, as also we learned from this meeting, we need to establish a common language between the key actors of the process. And uh, uh, we have people coming from uh, life science, uh, some kind of intermediate discipline, disciplines like physics, economics, engineering, and of course, the base is uh, computer science. This is the group. Uh, first of all, I have to acknowledge all the people at Cosby, and I'm talking of the work they did, and not of my personal, uh, not only of my personal work today. Uh, so, so for Cosby uh, was born five years ago by an agreement uh, from Microsoft Research Cambridge and the University of Trento, and this is what we got in this uh, in these five years of activities. I uh, would like to show you also, we started monitoring the download of our software prototypes uh, end of 2008, and there is a, a, a big growth of people and groups around the world that are using this, this technology. So uh, this is, this is uh, just to introduce briefly the center. Then the basic idea on which we work is that uh, we can interpret biological systems as uh, computational systems. And in particular, this is true when you consider any uh, biocomponents in a system as a computational unit uh, that changes its behavior depending on the interaction that this unit has with the other part of the system as well. For instance, if you think of protein-protein interaction, these are the base for uh, exploiting the phenotypical uh, behavior, uh, behavior of cell. And then since uh, cells are highly, highly parallel, there are a lot of actions happening at the same time and at different levels, we thought that we could look at the theory of parallel and distributed language in order to see whether we can find some, uh, some uh, formalism that is suitable to model, uh, to model these systems. So what we want to do is to put all that people I showed you uh, before together in order to impact on uh, systems biology, as this is our mission. We want to find some results, some way of modeling biological systems, but also on core computer science. The basic idea is that life underwent millions of years of evolution and found some way of managing the complexity of the cell so that if we are able to better understand how that work, we can even think to reverse engineer that knowledge into the way in which we program software and we uh, develop software uh, today. So uh, some basic uh, aspects of our approach is that uh, it must be quantitative. Uh, biological systems and biological phenomena are all driven by quantities. So you have temperature, you have concentration of elements, so you have gradients. 
you have whatever, so that a qualitative description of the behavior, which is usually uh, done through uh, standard programming languages, is, uh, is not enough. And what we want to exploit is also computational thinking in this, in this uh, effort in order to see which are the mechanistic steps that the system perform in order to evolve as uh, we observe uh, in the lab. And this mechanistic uh, description allow us to, uh, to infer the causality between the events, and this is something which is really useful once we want to make prediction of the future behavior. Then I said we want to have formal specification. In order to have formal specification, we have to find formalisms that are not ambiguous, like the, uh, you know, the natural language, which is the main vehicle of uh, disseminating biological results uh, in, in the literature and in the conferences. And that is not uh, suitable for being compiled in something that can be executed uh, to provide the, uh, the outcome of the simulation. Then there is the problem of complexity. Uh, the systems we are studying nowadays are increasingly growing in size. There are a lot of data that is produced, and all that data need to be taken into account. The classical mathematical te techniques used so far uh, so suffer the combinatorial explosion problem. So if you think of ordinary differential equation, for instance, you have to foresee a variable for any possible state in which a protein during a the simulation can be. And this is something that, of course, uh, is uh, computationally intensive on one side, but it's also something that limits the capability of writing large models because we cannot manage intellectually the complexity of considering all that, all that variables. So what, what we are proposing is something that is different from classical bioinformatics, which has which has uh, mainly focused uh, on static and structural descriptions. And it is also different from mathematical and computational biology. Mathematical and computational biology is something that uh, refers to the fact of using computer uh, to solve uh, uh, description or to provide help in making some calculation on the outcome of experiments or on the equations that are used to describe the uh, global, behavior, global behavior of the system. And there is usually a double step of relationship between these mathematical models and what you observe out of a solution of a system of equation, because first you have the biological knowledge, you have to translate this biological knowledge into a mathematical formalism, which are the equations, and then you have to code that equations in a programming languages in order to solve the systems and to obtain the behavior. Any of these two steps need to be uh, done by some expert, one, the first one in, mathem in mathematics, and the second one by uh, a computer science, a computer scientist. And for both steps, you have to trust the guy that is doing the job that what he produce is exactly what the system does and is exactly what uh, you would like to, to see. So in this, uh, in this respect, uh, the main challenges that we try to address in this uh, Cosby Lab environment are uh, here listed. The first one is uh, our approach is interaction-based. As we interpret uh, uh, biological entities as computational units and their uh, evolution is driven by reaction, we uh, describe those reactions as an exchange of information between, uh, between their representations. And then, of course, since interaction is around and concurrence is around, uh, there is also an emergent behavior which is not usually uh, easily inferable from the single behavior of the subcomponents, but it is just the set of subcomponents we consider, the way in which they interact, that produce the global behavior that we observe. The second uh, important issue that we have to address is partial knowledge. Par partial knowledge derives from the fact that uh, in most of the cases, if you want to have a, a very specific and precise description of the biological systems you are considering, uh, you need to have a lot of information which is not available. 
is not available because experiments are uh, too difficult to be performed in the lab or because I uh, needed too much resources to perform these, these experiments. So any uh, modeling environment have to cope with this lack of information and we uh, need to identify ways of uh, suggesting possible values of this lacking information to produce new hypotheses that then can be tested in the lab after uh, an, in silico, an in silico analysis to reduce the number of possible experiments uh, to be done. <coughs> as far as experiments are concerned, it is also possible that there, is, there are ambiguous uh, observations in different labs. So you can get different values for the same, <coughs> for the same experiments. There is no standard formalism. So there is no standard protocol for uh, storing uh, uh, this uh, information so that Many times you have to perform manipulation of the data, even if you retrieve it from public databases or private databases, in order to match them with the standard way uh, that you want to use it into the modeling system. Then, uh, in order to describe the behavior of complex systems, we have to take into account uh, the fact that uh, there are different levels of abstraction. You can think of the DNA, you can think of the proteins, which interacts together and, def and decide which is the behavior of a single cell, but cells interact between them. They form tissues, tissues forms organs, and so on and so forth. You can go up to uh, full organisms or even population of organisms. And then, of course, you have to take into account the time of these processes and the distribution in space uh, of the elements you consider. And then finally, as I said before, we want to be able to exploit causal relationship between the actions that drive uh, the, evolution, the evolution of the system. So here is the basic idea. We want to be able to make prediction uh, using simulation and representing the uh, biological systems through a programming language whose execution of programs provide a possible outcome in time of the systems that is represented by the language, with the goal of reaching some sort of digitalized representation of the uh, biological system so that we can use that digitalized representation to perform experiments by perturbation, by uh, what-if uh, techniques. Of course, we cannot do this abstractly, and we have some fields. We uh, work on in order to take biological information. In particular, we, at, at molecular, molecular and cell biological level, we are studying many different pathways uh, all, together, all together in order to take care of their interaction and growing from single cascades to a, a real networks of interaction. And then also we uh, consider morphogenesis and tissue in order to be able at higher level of abstraction uh, the availability of cell-cell interaction and tissue formation. Then we scale up even more, um, moving towards uh, ecolo ecology, where we uh, study through uh, networks and still through uh, stochastic simulation uh, ecosystems and how uh, elements of ecosystems interact with the uh, aim at producing uh, helps in the definition of policy for conservation management. Another field which put those two kinds into a, con into a unique context is nutrigenomics. Nutrigenomics, we want to study simultaneously the effect of the nutrients on the uh, molecular behavior of the cell and hence on the health of individuals, together with the effect that the food which produce uh, good effect on the health, uh, uh, which is the effect of this uh, food on the environment in order to optimize the two things together and to balance the sustainability of the agricultural production and the health of the individuals that look at, that eat that food. Of course, a similar, very similar approach can be uh, applied also on pharmacology, uh, where we are, again, using the knowledge acquired in the previous uh, molecular and cell biology works to study the effect of uh, drugs in terms of their efficacy, in terms of the dosage, and in terms of uh, the best way in time to, uh, 
to assume drugs uh, related to um, oncological, oncological drugs. So this is a, a brief introduction of what we are doing and what we want to do with this Cosby Lab, uh, this Cosby Lab platform. So the conceptual framework is the one of identifying and modeling formalisms in which we are able to encode what happens in nature, then performing some sort of inference, so reasoning on this formal system, and then decode what we get by reasoning on the formal systems in terms of what it means on the real systems in nature. This, of course, is not an easy task. This is a metabolic pathway. You can see how complex it is. It is almost impossible to manage it by uh, by end, or even to try to code the pathway in, 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 in any formalisms without introducing a introducing lot of errors. So the formalism feature uh, that we are including in our proposal are uh, the fact that it is not competing, first of all, with any other kind of modeling. It must be uh, complementary and interoperable with, with uh, mathematical modeling, for instance, and it would be also interoperable with other kind of uh, modeling techniques that address different issues with respect to the main one that we are addressing. The main one in, in, our, in our case are concurrency and complexity, as I said already. Uh, the description we want to have is an algorithmic description of the system so that we have the rules uh, that describe how the system behaves. And it must be quantitative because, as I said, biology is mainly driven by quantities. And we have to take into account those quantities into the specification formalism. We want to express causality. It is interaction driven. It must be synchronous because uh, in biology, uh, interaction happens when, at least at cellular level, if you think of protein-protein interaction, uh, interaction means that two proteins bounce together to form a complex. And of course, to bound together, this is a, a synchronous event. And of course, those uh, events change the future behavior and the capabilities of the new objects uh, that uh, popul populate the system. So we need to be able to dynamically change the capabilities of any of the objects. Uh, we want to avoid a, a combinatorial explosion. We want to have compositional and modular representation of the system. So the metaphor underlying the language is this one. Any biological entity is represented as a process. The interaction capability of the biological entity are considered to be typed interaction sites of the process. Uh, interaction, real interaction in the biological realm is an exchange of information over these sites in the computer science uh, approach. Complexation and decomplexation binding and unbi in biology is like binding and unbinding of names in computer science. And then the dynamics biology is represented as the state change of the systems when we run, when we run a program. So uh, we have uh, an environment like this, which has the Blanks language that I will introduce briefly at the core, with a, lot, with a set of tools running around the language that allow to infer knowledge from experiments in order to fill the model with parameters, to compose models together, to run the models in order to get the outcome of the simulation, to be able to, to abstract information from the outcome of simulation, to visualize in various ways that, that information, and also, of course, to import and export the results uh, of the simulation from into and, for, and, and, and from our environment. So uh, briefly, the genesis of the Blanks language is uh, starting from stochastic PyCalculus. Uh, that was defined then many years ago to model computer networks. Uh, stochastic PyCalculus was then applied to biological systems, but it was not meant for that purpose. Uh, so there, there, there is a need of many tricks using that language to model uh, biological systems. So uh, after some attempt and some experience in making those kind of models, we decided to try to design a language from scratch, having in mind the advantages of the stochastic by calculus, but uh, directly inspired uh, by, uh, by uh, biological systems. So we came out with this uh, beta binder solution, which is a theoretical calculus uh, that was, a, as I said, an attempt to solve some of the problems that 
uh, stochastic pi calculus as in modeling biology. And uh, it solved theoretically the problems. Then when we tried to make an implementation, it was not fast enough uh, for simulating systems so that we slightly modified this calculus again, reaching the Blank's uh, language, which is the actual one, uh, that has uh, the benefits of the calculus in solving the problems of pi calculus, and it is fast enough for performing uh, large size simulation. So this is how the language looks like. Uh, any biological element is represented by a box like this. The box has an internal behavior, which is represented by a process, and has some interfaces. What is here called the interfaces is actually uh, the interface is used to connect and to communicate with other, with other boxes, so represents the biological interaction. These two sets of descriptors are used to describe uh, something about the box. For instance, uh, if we have a spatial representation where the box is located in space uh, or uh, how many of those boxes are around, so are uh, information which is used by the simulator in order to decide the next step uh, to be performed. So it is a language like, uh, you know, this one. It's really much like a, a, a program which has two separate concepts. One describes the, uh, the behavior of the system, and the other one describes the quantitative information. So if you look at the type box, you list there the types of the interfaces, and then you list some sort of affinities, but I will uh, be back uh, later on this. Sorry. So there are three kinds of actions that one can perform that we call monomolecular actions and are those that affect a single box in the system. Uh, biomolecular actions that are those that affect one or more boxes so that two boxes can complex or communicate or exchange information. And then there are events which represents a global uh, operation on the system. So for instance, if we uh, consider this box, it has uh, the process inside, which represents the behavior, and the two interfaces, and interface has a name, X and Y in this case, and the type uh, T and U in this case here. So one action that we can perform to change, to change dynamically the capabilities of the box is to add an interface through this expose operation. So expose X V means that I want to build a new interface named X with type V, but I need to be able to distinguish the interfaces by their name. So I just rename here the X and create a new interface with, uh, with type B. Then I can decide to hide one of the interface so that I annotate this Y with an H. The hiding, and, and, and then I have the complementary operation of an hiding, of uh, an hiding, the same interface. This is due to the fact that once you have uh, proteins are made up of uh, domain, active domain over which the other proteins bound and interact, if two of them bound together, they usually change their three-dimensional structure so that some of those domains can remain hidden inside the structure so that are no more available for further interaction unless the complexation happens. So we need to hide and unhide uh, dynamically those interfaces to represent the conformation of the elements we are, we are considering. We have still other uh, monomolecular actions. One is uh, the die action. The die is, uh, simply means that the box is destroyed, and it is used, for instance, to represent the decay of, of elements. Another one is changing the type of an interface. It, it happens sometimes that once a protein is phosphorylated, it changes this affinity of interaction with other elements so that we uh, model this fact simply by changing the type of, inter of an interface so that the interaction over these X interfaces are now different from the ones uh, previously listed. And 
Also, there is this plus, which is inherited from process algebras and represents non-determinism in behavior with the uh, property that once I select one of the two alternatives, I lose the opportunity of executing the other. The delay uh, action here is discarded if I do the change as I show it. Bimolecular actions. Bimolecular actions is when boxes exchange information or complex one another to build uh, new entities uh, into the system. This is something that uh, in computer science is done once the two partners know exactly the name or the port or the address of the other. Uh, and it is how it is modeled in, in all the process calculi or, or in all the language used so far to modern biology as far as I know. But it is not the case for biological systems because two proteins uh, can interact even if they do not have exact complementarity of their domain. So in biology, interaction is not a key lock operation, but it depends on the affinity and on the number of proteins I have around the one I'm considering. So even if there, there is not a, an exact complementarity, but there is great abundance of proteins quite similar, interaction can happen with a different probability, with a different speed, but can happen anyway. So the idea of uh, doing this sort of interaction is that here uh, operations are represented as send and receive operation. The question mark is the receive, and this other one is uh, a send. So in any uh, calculus or in computer science domain, these two can communicate if they share the same communication channel so that they should have the same name. This is not the case because we decided to rise the compatibility of communication between objects, not at the name of the channel, but at the type of the channel. So, ha so here, which is uh, the type file, we list the set of types of the interface that are around and for, any, and for the pair we are interested in, in letting them interact, we list a triple in which I have the two types and a real number which represents the parameter of an exponential distribution describing the probability of interaction over that channel. So that here Y has type U, Z has type V, U, V have an R affinity so that they can really interact, exchanging information so that this, v, this V can flow to the other box and replace the K that was the placeholder of the receive operation. Going down to this, to this situation in which the V, the value sent by this box, replaced the K, the target variable in that box. But of course, since X as type T and Z as type V, and also T and V are compatible with a different probability R1, the same two boxes can perform even these other operations so that the V now is interacting with the first receive and the W, uh, sorry, here is a W, and the W is replaced in P1. So this means that there is non-determinism in the interaction. And the same, from the same state, I can have many different interactions that are uh, characterized by different affinity probabilities. We will use these affinity probabilities to drive the stochastic, to st the stochastic simulation. And in particular, we will consider the probability plus the concentration of the objects that are involved. Because if, even if I have a high probability of interaction, but in, out of 1,000, there is just one single partner around, but there are other 1,000 that have, that have less affinity, but are much more uh, abundant, it is uh, also possible that that interaction is observed. So uh, following the Gillespie uh, simulation, stochastic simulation algorithm, we get as the uh, weight of those interactions, the probability times the concentration of the two partners involved. The third operation I mentioned is a global operation which is used to experiment on the system, and, it, and we call it events. Uh, these are global operations written like this one. For instance, this one means when there is a queue 
in the systems I'm observing with the exponential distribution represented by this 10. So this is again the, the same as the R in the, previous, in the previous slide. Then create a new copy of Q. And this happens here, exists the Q. With this rate, we create a new copy of the, Q of the Q box. And this can be used to inject in the system a drug at some point during the simulation or to remove a gene from uh, some sort of simulation at some point so that we can perform in silico, uh, in silico experiments. Now, uh, the fact that we, of using simply constant to describe uh, distributions is a limiting factor because we could have uh, the, the possibility or, or the need to express some sort of variable, dynamically variable uh, affinity rate so that we allow the possibility of using functions defined at whatever we like instead of a constant that are computed in once I observe that there is an R and Q in the system, says this, the, as this is the case, I compute the, the F function and with that rate I can perform a join, for instance, of R and Q and introduce a P in the system. So R and Q here are joined to produce a P. And these functions depend, for instance, on the concentration of the S, so that I can decide to have rates which depend on the state of the systems in which we are. I, I, I'm going to, to use them. So just an example. Uh, this is a sim very simple example, predator-prey example. Uh, here we specify that we want a box called predator with one interface named X type hunt which <coughs> can die with a given rate, or it can send something, a signal, an empty, an empty signal along that interface. <coughs> Sorry. The prey is a box that we call prey that has two interfaces, one called the X, again we type hunt, the same type of the predator, and another interface named Y, of type life, and this can interact with something, in particular this X will interact with that X, and it means if there is an interaction, the prey and the predator get in contact so that the prey die, or it can send something along life, uh, which means uh, the prey can eat and, 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 and du du duplicate. Then we have the nature, which is support of food to the system, which simply uh, repeatedly interact along an X channel of type life, so it can interact with the prey, which has always food to grow, if it is not killed by a predator. This box here, which we get uh, when the predator interacts with, <coughs> with the prey, uh, because it is this one, the content of the predator, if it interacts due to the plus signal, lose the opportunity of dying, <coughs> and we get the empty box, then we uh, introduce an event that says that once we have an empty box of this kind that we call it here predator replicator, we can split it in two copies of the predator, so that the predator is reproduced. The same can be done for the prey. And then, finally, here we say that we want to run a simulation in which there are 1,000 predator, 1,000 prey, and one nature, so some, someone that is providing food for the, for the prey, and what we get, uh, the affinity are the ones you expect, so that and along the hunt uh, type, prey and predator can interact, and along the life type, uh, prey and nature can interact. So we can have this interaction with, with, between predator and prey. The prey is left with a die with the infinity uh, probability, so that it will die for sure, and the, predate, and the predator remains with the empty box, Due to the die and to the event I showed you before, this box die and this box is split into two copies of the predator. So if the predator hit, 
can reproduce. Otherwise, it will die after some time. And what we get out of that is the typical oscillation of systems in which you have uh, prey and predator just running, just executing the program. So there is uh, uh, another issue I said in the beginning, complexation and the complexation between boxes. Here I showed you just flow of information between one box and another. We want to maybe uh, build complexes in which two boxes bound together, like this one, so that we can interpret this QR plus this link as a, an entity different from the others and new, newly generated it within the system. This was the specification of the affinities I've showed you before. So uh, it means that U and Z have an affinity 3.5, U and V have an affinity 1.5, but that affinity was just used to decide the speed of the flow of information between one box and the other. In the previous uh, languages used for modeling biology, this kind of complexation is programmed ad hoc, so that you have to put lines of code to say that the two box have to complex, and you have to put even lines of code if you want to, this box to decomplex at some point. But this is not what one wants to do because complexation and decomplexation is the very basic mechanisms in which biology evolves. Most of the entities just complex and decomplex. So it is something that is not worth uh, losing uh, intellectual uh, effort in, in, in order to be modeled, you would like to have the support of your systems to generate those possibilities automatically out of the definition of the interaction. So we decided to add two further parameters. One is complexation affinity, the other is decomplexation affinities that automatically allow to move from one configuration to the other. So just adding these two parameters into the type file, all the operation of complexation and decomplexation are automatically generated by the system without the need of programming them. You have just to say that these boxes can complex and then the system generates the code for you. And due to this uh, complexation and decomplexation probability, we can build a structure, complex structure, uh, out of just manipulating the affinity file uh, we can build lists, we can build uh, uh, rings, we can build trees, uh, we can create dynamically and change dynamically the capability uh, of, these, uh, of these structures. So in particular, we can uh, have code for generating binary trees uh, randomly starting from single box without the need of programming uh, all the uh, attachment and detachment of nodes. What we have here, we can start from a set of nodes we call initiator that have an interface. And then we start, and then we add a set of nodes which have uh, a root, a root uh, interface and two child interface. The initiator always binds to a root of a node and it is used to activate that node. What we do here is to, once a node is bind to an initiator, we anide the two child interface so that now nodes can attach to that interfaces. And uh, just doing this, you can build first the initiator binds to the node then the node is activated, so now it works like, like a root. Then one child can attach to the first of the two uh, child interfaces, so now it is a box in which we, we written here root one to say that it is a root with one child. Then we can add the second child and so on till building uh, complex, complex structures. Changing the affinity of complexation and decomplexation without touching anymore the code, we can, change, we can change the property of the trees we are, uh, we are building. And this is actually the basis for modeling morphogenesis in tissues where the nodes here are cells 
uh, that bound together to form a tree, uh, a tree or a ring structure. And again, we have just the local behavior, so the node, the root, and the childs that produce a global behavior just specifying the interaction capabilities between, uh, between the nodes. So the main complex, the main concepts of this Blank's language is that, uh, of course, it expresses causality because we have an algorithm, so we know exactly which are the steps performed in order to reach a given result. Uh, it can work at different level of abstraction. I showed you, an, as a first example, at population level in which we have predator and prey. The second one, which is just building of trees, but you can think of it like building a tissue. And uh, it can work, uh, si since you can make model just putting together those boxes, it is amenable to work with libraries in which we have predefined boxes for the main biological components we are interested in. And just manipulating the affinity of, those interfa of the interfaces of those boxes, we can build and put together a large model. This is why, in the beginning, I said to you that we are looking at the cross-talk between different pathways, we can model them separately, and then just by adding some interfaces here and there and defining their interaction capabilities without changing anymore the code we wrote, we can simulate cross-talk between different pathways. And this is a, a very uh, big advantage with respect, for instance, to equational modeling, where any time you discover new knowledge, you have to rewrite most of the equations because the new variable need to be correlated with the variables you had, uh, you had before. So this is why I think that computer science, computer science can play a real uh, good job. So there is, uh, of course, an implementation of this blank lang blanks language within a tool that we call Beta Workbench that uh, allow to write models it is an environment like this. Here uh, you have the kind of code I showed you before so that you can use this textual editor. And here you have the type file, this textual editor uh, to introduce the code, to introduce the affinity. And then there is a graphical interface which is directly connected with the code. As long as you write new lines, automatically the graphical representation is generated in the upper part of the screen, or vice versa, if you prefer to program visually using those kind of notation, the code, the, the text is uh, automatically generated. So the two parts of the windows are connected. If you want to introduce complexes, there is a part of the editor that allow you to build those kind of things. This is a, this is a complex, so many boxes uh, bound together that you can uh, introduced since the very beginning in your systems without the need of starting with the single components that interacting will generate that complex. Then you have the possibility of observing the network of the interactions that have been generated, the plot of the time, of the, the variation of the concentration of the objects over time. You can inspect uh, complexes to see how they are, for, from which uh, components they are formed. And all these windows, again, are, uh, are connected so that if you click or you select one node into the reaction network, it is highlighted, the structure of the node, it is highlighted the particular pro plot that refers to that, uh, to that node. There are some layout algorithms that allow you to visualize the networks in different ways, depending on the kind of properties you are interested in. And uh, you can also uh, select subset of the network to inspect uh, just those subset. It is also possible to observe the outcome of the simulation in a reaction uh, style so that you have the elements that react. Here you can, uh, probably is not readable, but it is written over there. Is this reaction are labeled with the kind of action that is performed and the outcome. Then if you click on some of these elements, you again can inspect how they are formed and how they look like. It is possible to visualize the causality between the elements. So you have this kind of representation for causality once you have the uh, reactions. Any box here, any box here contains a reaction, and there is a causal dependency between two reactions 
if uh, uh, one box, the box of one reaction is inside the box of the other reaction. So in particular here, you have this box and you have two boxes inside with no relation between the two. It means that this uh, left box and this right box reactions are independent one another so that in your systems you can observe them independently, uh, one before the other or vice versa, just because there is no causal link uh, between the two. And finally, we can export the models into, SB, uh, into SBML for uh, interoperability. Now, uh, we started with this part of the tool and we easily realized that the networks we can generate if we consider large systems can be very large and probably uh, not easy to be analyzed with that tool I showed you so far. So we defined a new uh, network analyzer that we call, uh, we call graph, which is uh, able to import a, a full set of uh, formats so that you can import, uh, of, of course, uh, the, the outcome of uh, the simulation run inside the environment can be imported into this tool, but also you can import graphs from many other, many other uh, simulator. You can then represent the graph here inside. You can, select, you can compute on the graphs a full set of uh, index computation or algorithms that select parts and verify hypotheses on the graph you have. You can uh, okay, select, part, uh, select part of the graph, uh, and for instance, this part here, you can compute some uh, indexes. You can uh, calculate shortest paths between two nodes. Uh, you can uh, visualize the nodes, uh, changing the size of the nodes or of the edges, depending on the weight that you can attach to them. You can attach graphics information to the nodes. This is an ecological network, so this is, this, these are fishes, but in general, what we can do if, it, it, if uh, we consider protein-protein interaction network, we can attach to any node the three-dimensional structure of the protein, so that can be inspected here. So, uh, so, so we can, uh, at this stage, we have seen that we can write a model, simulate a model, and make some kind of analysis on the outcome of the simulation, both on the network or on the plot side for the concentration of the elements. Now, I said in the beginning we want to be interoperable with mathematical modeling because, you know, sometimes it could be easier to manage systems with ordinary differential equation, in particular since we are relying on stochastic simulation. Uh, it is, uh, our approach is much more useful when there are elements into the system so whose concentration is very low so that the noise of the system can be, can be high. But if we consider systems in which most of the quantities are, are very high and are almost constant, uh, equations describe in a quicker way the steady state behavior, behavior of the system. So we explored that with the, which is the relationship between our approach, our formalism, our modeling approach and ordinary differential equations. And for doing that, we uh, consider the cell cycle uh, description. This is a reference model that is uh, available in most books uh, of biology for describing the cell cycle. And there exist models that have been already validated by experimental uh, practice um, done by differential equations. What we did is building a model simulating the model and uh, looking whether the uh, outcome of our simulation is more or less the same of the one of the ordinary differential equations. So that said, it is just the first step of the story because, of course, you can write a program that produces the, the same kind of oscillations. So what we want to do is to automate this translation here. So just having the set of differential equations we want to have an automatic way of deriving this, the program, a program that produces the same outcome of the set of equations. So um, 
The main difference is that equations are deterministic and work mainly with the concentration of elements. We are doing stochastic simulations, so we have to work with the number of elements in our systems. And fortunately, there is this easy equations that uh, transforms concentration into numbers of molecules, and it is based on the Avogadro number and on the size of the reaction volume. This is standard from chemistry. So uh, let's see how can we translate automatically the systems of equations into a Blanks model. And consider, for instance, this uh, part of the model, which is pictorially represented here, and say that the concentration of sick BT uh, depends on these parameters, K1 over alpha, and it is uh, and depends on sick BT degradation. So first of all, there are some constants around. Uh, I say to you that we can represent rates through functions, and we list here just those functions exactly with the same name. So we define alpha, which is a constant to which we associate the value that alpha has in the original model, k1, k2p, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> then here says that sick bt grow, concentration of sick bt grows proportionally to this constant. And hence what we do is just to add an event to the systems which says whenever I have sick bt into the system, with this rate, which is K1 of alpha, defined here, K1 over alpha, I add a new, a new element of sick BT. So I'm making growing the number of sick BT according to this parameter. The other is the degradation. So according to the parameter K2P, depending on the cardinality of sick BT, so this is the definition of the parameter, I add an event that says with that rate, I delete a copy of the box. Of course, I can do the same for all the other parts. I'm not spending too much time here. I can do the same job for all the other equations so that having the list of equations with that translation, I get a model. I have a function file in which I have defined all the parameters. I have a model file, which is the code generated by that translation algorithm. And I have an affinity file that says which are the box that can interact. I run the simulation, and what I get is exactly with the difference that we have some stochastic noise. Of course, instead of having a deterministic solution, I have the same behavior of the ODE model and of the Blanks model. We made much more experiments looking also at mutants of the original cell type used in the ordinary differential equation. And again, we get, through the translation, the same results also in the Blanks model. Various experiments, and the results is the same. So the automatic translation allow us to reproduce the outcome of the set of equations. But once we observe the network of interaction, this is Although the plot is the same, the network of interactions is not too much related to the, to the one uh, that we saw in the begin, at, at the beginning in which all the elements were connected. So what we do is that introducing or modifying, we can use the full power of blanks because the translation uses just as target a subset of the language to introduce some kind of synchronization between the elements and so manipulating the automatic generated code, we can get a situation in which also the network of interaction that is produced is very similar to the network, to the wiring of the network of the cartoon representing the cell, the cell cycle. So uh, the last uh, slides show that we can program a biological system. A program means that we have, we, we have to have the skills for programming, and hence the solution as it is is not amenable to biologists for, uh, for being you know, directly usable. So we uh, decided to put
put on top of the language a higher level interface, which is tabular uh, based, so that people that want to make a model just have to fill some tables. Uh, they need to know nothing about programming. They fill some table. The original idea was to use, um, before the tables, was to use a natural, uh, a constrained natural language in which there were some holes that biologists have to fill selecting some keywords from a list of, uh, of keywords so that we uh, ruled out ambiguity from these modeling activities and then we were able to define an automatic translator from this set of statements into an algorithmic uh, description, but uh, that was not so much structured and it was not easy to be used. We tested these activities with, all, with, with many of our uh, collaborators in biological labs around, and this tabular uh, solution seems to be the more, the more usable directly by them. So actually we have uh, four kind of, uh, of tables that I'll show you in a while, to represent the structure of the systems in which one lists the compartments, the components, and the complexes. Uh, one, for, one set of tables for uh, listing the capabilities, so again, the binding affinities that I showed you before in the language, and the translocation affinities, so the capability of objects to move from one part of the space to another. And... Uh, uh, Sorry, here is not binding affinities and translocation affinities, but is uh, dynamics, binding dynamics and translocation dynamics to describe the behavior. And then we have a support table in which one insert all the parameters, all the functions that are used in the models. So you can easily recognize here all the main feature of the Blanks language. We have this structure table that describe which are the boxes I'm considering the capabilities which says which are the types of the interface that I'm adding to the boxes, the dynamics that will provide rules for interactions, and then the parameters which are the rates and the function I showed you before. So the tables look like this. It is a, a collaborative environment, uh, this Blanks for Bio, where many different people can share the same model and they can work together on those models. It is library-based so that you can import from some public database components that are uh, stored into the tables according to that information, and then you can, you can manipulate a little bit it if you, if you want. And uh, this first table is described compartments so that here you say is which are the main compartments of the system you are interested in, for instance, cytoplasm, nucleus, membranes, and so on and so forth. Uh, you say the, the hierarchical structure of the system here, uh, specifying for any compartment in which other compartment it is included. Then uh, you can define the size of the compartment, which is used for automatically translated concentrations into number of molecules. You remember I need the volume of the reaction. And then there is a uh, description of how many of these objects are around. Of course, there are part of the tables that are not visible here, that are over there, in which you can add notes or whatever you like to describe uh, the, single, the single lines. Components have more or less the same structure. You give a name to a component, you can describe what it is. Here is a library column, so if you are picking some of those, of those components from a library, here it is listed, which is which is the library. And then for any of these components, you have to list the sites, the active sites or the active domain of the component, which will be then translated into the interfaces of the box. You have to say in which compartment it is located, how many of those components are available, uh, references if you like, note, and so on and so forth. And then in any table, there is a reliability measure just to take into account whether the data you are using is uh, coming from a, an experiment, a real experiment, so that you can assign an high reliability to that, or whether you are guessing or inferring from some other information so that the reliability is not so high, and so on and so forth, so that in the end you can even associate a measure of the reliability of the results you get 
out of uh, the simulation. Complexes are defined more or less in the same way as components, and then we have the binding affinities that for any component, you list two sites, which are uh, the, the two interfaces that can bound together, and associate a rate to that binding. So uh, out of this table, you build the type file that I showed you before in which the affinity between boxes is, uh, is inserted. You can see here some other. And then we have also the possibility of specifying, according to the binding and unbinding actions, uh, binding and unbinding modifiers. So after, as I said in the beginning, after two, pro two, two objects are bound together, they can change their capability. And these changes are specified here so that this part allows you to write the processes inside the boxes to see how they behave after some, some interaction. The dynamics is something like that, which specify when some actions or some events are enabled. This is a, a, an if-then language only. So you can specify only conditions. And you have a set of uh, generation, degradation, joining, and splitting of boxes, which are also the feature that I showed you before in the blanks language. And then you have the parameters in which you specify rates or whatever you like. So uh, this, this interface then uh, produce automatically a blanks program that can be executed using the simulator I showed you before and then the outcome analyzed. So these allow us uh, through the libraries to integrate different sources of data from public and private databases or even from experiments directly if you can perform them and allow to connect life scientists to the programming language blanks without knowing anything about programming. They just need to know the main concepts of biology and write them into the table. There is a support, a constraint uh, check anytime something is inserted into the table that ensures that no uh, conflicts between the information that is inserted is introduced or that all the information needed to produce the code uh, is available. Otherwise, there is a, a support that asks the user for inserting the right information into the right place in order to be able to produce a correct blanks program. OK, very quickly. Uh, I said in the beginning, we make models that are stochastic in nature. And that must be driven by quantities. And also I said in the, that not all those quantities avail are available because there is partial knowledge or whatever. So uh, we need, but to run the program, of course, you have to provide it with the set of parameters that drive the simulation. Uh, the basic idea is. Uh, that we have, if we have experiments of some kind, usually the outcome is not directly amenable to be inserted into the program, so that we need to, we need to um, manipulate it. In particular, the basic idea is that most of the time what we have is a cartoon like this, in which you have biological elements that interact together, produce something different, or they are translated into some some other stuff. And you can have experiments that tell you which is the variation in concentration over time of this element. So that the experiment measures at different time steps, time points, the concentration of those objects. In order to perform a stochastic simulation, I have to associate a rate, a speed, to any of these reactions. So this tool, Kimfer, what does is to take the concentrations and the qualitative description without parameters of the biological systems and produce infer values for, this, for these reactions. So here we describe a, a model in terms of reactions with no parameter, just a rewriting of the cartoon. 
This rewriting of the cartoon is automatically transformed in a set of equations <coughs> that can be inspected, and then if you do not, do not like those equations, you can write your own. And then you input the time series of the concentrations that you have got from whatever, and the tool, uh, sorry, and the tool produces the values, suitable values for the uh, parameters. Of course, this is an inference, and you have to check whether this inference is correct or not, or is this suitable or not for the systems you are modeling. And we have on top of it a sort of sensitivity analysis that say us which are the main relevant parameters among the ones we inferred that can mainly affect the behavior of the system so that if we are producing hypotheses through these tools, knowing which are the main parameters, we can try to plan specific lab experiments just to measure that parameters rather than going ahead by trial and error. We can have some uh, educated guess for the experiments to be performed. We applied for uh, that kind of tool for the cell cycle model I showed you before, because of course what we had there as some description in which the stochastic rate were not available, but for which m measurements of the time series were uh, available online. So starting from the model without parameters, plus the experiments, Kimfer was able to infer which are the rates that we have to associate to the, to the equations. So this is one example, and this is the outcome of the inference which are more or less good for most of this part. We can apply it also to other, to other examples. So the last step is uh, we have a set of tools, but we want to have an environment in which the user can uh, experience something similar, very similar to a real experiment. So he would like to make uh, inference, simulation, analysis, and maybe even describe a protocol in which those applications have to be connected depending on the experiments you want to do. So we decided to implement an orchestration and a composition of services uh, that allow the user to define, a, to define sort of protocols. So for instance, here uh, we can describe a model, then maybe uh, th this is related to an experiment of evolutionary biology. So we have a model of the system. We want to run multi times the same simulation. So this is a block that tells the environment to produce multiple run simulation. Then here we collect, so here we spawn many copies of the simulator, made, for instance, over a cluster machine. Then we collect the outcome of all those simulations and we compute some sort of fitness to see which are the, uh, the, 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 the elements that need to be passed to the, next, to the next generation. In the end, we collect those elements. We apply a mutation to the code, which is done automatically on the interface or things like that. And then we restart the process of the multiple simulation and so on and so forth, as long as we get uh, uh, the thickness we are looking for, or as long as we reach a maximum number of loop uh, into, the, into the flow. Similarly, we can do much more complex things, like this one. We can, for instance, have some blanks model. We can input data from some database, infer the rates, edit the model in order to, mer to merge rates and models simulate, perform statistics, and visualize them through a chart. And to validate those statistics according to some experimental data that we can have, if the system is validated, then we are happy with the model that represents more or less what we were looking for. Otherwise, we can iterate the process and modify the model and, and, until we get the results selected. So, uh, even other activities can be done to associate with part of the models a specific visualization mechanism. So for instance, for some part, I could be interested in looking at the three-dimensional structure. For other parts, maybe I'm not interested so that we have the opportunity to associate with any, sub, with any box the way in which it has to be 
it has to be uh, visualized. Uh, in this way, what we have is really uh, an environment in which we can define protocols or experiments in a process that is uh, almost standardized, at least with respect to the environment we are proposing, so that even different experiments done by different people using the same kind of environment are easily uh, comparable and integrable. There are other tools that at the moment are not yet integrated into the environment, but we are looking at these integrations that are uh, spatial simulation based on reaction diffusion simulation that you can uh, visualize in a three-dimensional environment or, or, or simulate it just using a two-dimensional environment and the plot dynamically. And we have a high, uh, higher level interface similar to the blanks for bio that I showed you so far for ecology. This line is a language interface for modeling, for modeling ecology. At the moment, it's just uh, at the first stage of development, it is a language, uh, natural language-based description, but we are working to port this description into the tables as well. And then there are some older tools. Uh, this is a statistical analyzer that can perform statistical analysis on the outcome of multi-run multi simulations. Uh, most of the features of this SNASER are already ported into the Cosby Lab graph, okay, which is integrated into the environment. And the remaining ones, which are SNASER and not yet into the Cosby Lab graph, uh, will be ported in the next release. We are working, uh, we are working at it. And then we have a reaction-based, based on membrane computing simulator in which here, the model, instead of uh, using a language, are just represented by a set of reactions, and then you can perform simulation. Uh, there is also an applet for this simulator. All those tools are available uh, on our website, so that if someone is interested, can download and look at it and play with it. Uh, the technology we used uh, so far for implementing the environment is Windows Presentation Foundation for the graphical user interfaces, dot not, sorry, dot .NET for, for with, with including uh, the parallel extension TPL, SQL Server for the database underlining. We are porting part of this uh, stuff on the cloud within the Venus C projects using uh, Azure. Uh, we have, uh, we, we run, as I said, multiple simulation on a class, an APC server. And we are using also Iron Python for, uh, as a dynamic script, for dynamic scripting. As you may have uh, uh, seen from some of the, uh, the screenshot, you probably have seen that we are also uh, using the CCR from robotics and we are using exploring joints from Microsoft Research Cambridge. Uh, we are considering uh, for 3D visualization XNA and Microsoft Solver Foundation because we are also including a deterministic simulator, algorithmic simulator. And we are using Visual Studio with Team Foundation Server for producing, producing that software. These are the guys that uh, did this, this job. I have to thank all of them. And uh, this is the end. Testing, one, two, yeah, I think it's working. Okay, so um, one, one thing that I noticed at the beginning of your talk, uh, have you heard of the term systems thinking? Systems thinking. Yeah, systems yeah. thinking, because that was, I, I just thought I'd bring that up, because that's a lot, I mean, that really encapsulates what you were talking about with this framework, what you're trying to capture is modeling, computer modeling of systems thinking, so it's a, just thought I'd bring that up. No, yes, that, that, that's absolutely true. Well, what I call it is computational thinking, which is more or less the same, and uh, I completely agree with you. We, we had a systems thinking workshop at the University of Pittsburgh last week, and uh -huh. uh, Jeanette Wing was there and did a talk on the, the uh, 
chair of the computer science department at CMU, and she gave a talk on computational thinking, and the uh, topic came up is what's the, what is the difference between computational thinking and systems thinking, and uh, I don't think anybody had a good answer, but uh, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, she, was she, she thought that systems thinking was a subset of computational thinking. That's, that's how she put it, but I'm not sure I would agree with that, but the, the, it was debatable, I guess. But. Yeah. Okay. I just had a, a, a couple questions. So what are the trade-offs? Um, I guess what are the disadvantages to your technique? I mean, is it slower execution? Is it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the disadvantage is that, uh, of course, if you have a set of equations and you want to solve them, uh, it is faster. It is faster for sure, but what they provide you is with an average behavior of the systems at steady state. So this is why at some point I say that if you have some systems in which you know that they have a steady state, it's probably better to use equations to represent them and then try to integrate the two approaches. So this is why I would like to have them interoperable. If you have stochasticity in the system, uh, of course, so you cannot represent them with uh, equation or even if you use partial differential equation, you add the, an artificial noise to the model. But in this case, you have a much more precise uh, representation. And then the second, the second point is that uh, you can uh, work uh, from many different approaches and automatically generate the model so that it is easier to, to go towards a uh, genome-wide application that you can do by hand. Of course, you need some sort of automatic way. So for sure, uh, and disadvantage is the, is, is the speed. Uh, the second point, which is not a disadvantage of the techniques, as far as I know, but it is a disadvantage of the community, is difficult to convince people that uh, something new uh, can be beneficial to them because they have their equations, they live it with them for 30 years, and so why I have to change? Yeah, I was wondering about that because I've, to me this seems to be much easier, but I was wondering about those in the field, what, how they felt about adopting it because they may be already ingrained in... Yeah, the, diff EQs and things like that, and they'd be harder to, to or resist the, the switch over. Yeah, the, 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 this, is, this, this is a very, a very good question because what you experience is that, of course, even differential equations are not easy to, to, to write, but you know, at high school or somewhere, you have always seen equations. So someone comes to you and says, this is mathematics, this is equations, okay, you are fine with that. Our, our equations, I can live with them. But programming is something different. It seems more, much more difficult to them rather than looking at the equation, even if they cannot write neither programs, neither equations. So, so it's some sort of you know, uh, educating people that programming in the end is just a different way of speaking and, and nothing else. So you have to talk to one. So we are talking in English. I'm not in English. I'm trying to, to, to communicate. And, and the same, when you talk to the computer, you have to learn a common language. So the, that's, that's the basis. But then what we have to do in order to convince them is to show the results. And then at that point, they are willing to, to at least try. And that interface uh, we worked on after some years of experience is, uh, helps a lot because you need any more to talk to them, you have to program. You have to fill a table. And then by magic, you get the outcome of the simulation. So this is the, the, the way we are trying to. Well, well, hopefully the new scientists who are you know, growing yeah, up but that, won't that, be so bothered. But I was wondering if people were bothered by the fuzziness of it. Like equations are precise and people feel, feel good about that. And then this is kind of fuzzier and so maybe they, they just have to get past it. But so anyway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe they can take it faster, but there is a semantics, there is an implementation. Mm, yeah. So you exactly know what is coming out of, out of the execution. There is something that they, you know. But I thought it was really nice how you can automatically translate the differential equations into your system and then run them side by side. I think that's a pretty powerful way to, to show that it works. That you, they lose yeah, nothing. Yeah, I, I was exactly. surprised. You, I, I wasn't sure you could do that, but I was, that's great. Um, I had a second question. Um, this is totally different. Uh, when I saw the tabular interface, mm -hmm. and I thought plugging into Excel, did you... Uh, I mean, since you have an integrated environment, it probably doesn't make sense. But as soon as I saw that, I just thought of Excel because people are familiar with that. No, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That, that was the idea. We started trying to, to set up those kind of things, filling Excel tables. Uh, but then, 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 you know, it's much, much, much more uh, easier. You need much less than what Excel can provide you. You have to perform no calculation, no formula, not, nothing. And instead, you have to 
import from many different formalisms, so there are ad hoc translations. So it's, it, it, I think it's possible to integrate in Excel for sure. It didn't, you don't think it buys you anything though? I didn't know if there might be some benefit to oh, plug into Excel, I don't know, you know, but I didn't know if you'd consider it, that's all, I was just wondering. Well, no, we did not thought of that, but probably it, uh, it is it's something we can look at for sure. Yeah, yeah, you might look at that, okay. Okay, great, thank you, it was good, very good. Thank you. Any other questions? So, so how much slower? The, the simulation with this yeah. approach with respect to ordinary yeah, differential just, equations. Uh, it, it depends because we can write, well, you know, as any techniques, so you have thresholds. So you, you have to, to, to see how the structure is. You can write a very simple model that you can run for three days instead of three seconds, or you can write models that are more or less at the same speed. It, it very much depends on the structure. There is no general. I have no idea. background here. I was just trying to get some metric of, yeah. Yeah, but you know, usually what you can simu you can solve an equation, you can simulate. It's not a matter of seconds, but you can simulate and you can live with it because even if, if, if you go into the lab, you have to wait for months. Mm. So in okay. the end, even right. if you have two hours for a simulation, it's fine. That's fine. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Well. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I think you know uh, we should uh, you know thank uh, Corrado for I think you know pretty comprehensive. Uh, tutorial and uh, well inviting you to uh, come over to COSB. I mean, COSB is one of the three uh, joint institute that Microservices Cambridge is running in Europe. One is in, in Barcelona with Matteo Valero on uh, many multi-core architecture. One is uh, in Paris at INRIA for uh, formal methods and in general you know, around you know uh, uh, fundamental research in computer science, and then there is the one that Corrado runs, uh, you know, in collaboration with the University of Trento, where he's also a professor uh, on computational system biology. So I do invite you, you know, to come and visit. Okay. <laughs>